I've got to say the COVID stricken version of Donald Trump is even more insufferable than the regular version of Donald Trump because it's almost like he's going out of his way to be more obnoxious because he thinks he can get away with it because people are more sympathetic towards him. But he's just so insufferable. And, you know, it's not just the tweet storms in all caps, but it's also him downplaying the virus while he has it. And now he is effectively throwing a temper tantrum and saying the American people aren't going to get any relief until after the election because I say so. So he tweeted out, Nancy Pelosi is asking for $2.4 trillion to bail out poorly run, high crime Democrat states, money that is in no way related to COVID-19. We made a very generous offer of $1.6 trillion, and as usual, she is not negotiating in good faith. I am rejecting their request and looking to the future of our country. I have instructed my representatives to stop negotiating until after the election, when immediately after I win, we will pass a major stimulus bill that focuses on hardworking Americans and small business. I have asked Mitch McConnell not to delay, but to instead focus full time on approving my outstanding nominee to the United States Supreme Court, Amy Coney Barrett. Our economy is doing very well. The stock market is at record levels, jobs and unemployment. Also coming back in record numbers, we are leading the world in economic recovery. The best is yet to come. Now, what I find hilarious is that after he tweeted this, the stock market plunged. But I mean, this is the worst possible thing you could say if you're trying to win an election because you are openly admitting that your party is the one that is obstructing everything. Your party is the reason why this stimulus bill isn't going to pass. When was it that they passed the CARE Act? It's been months since Americans got a one-time payment of $1,200 and you're saying we're not going to do jack fucking shit until after this election? Okay, well, reasonable people are going to see this and think to themselves, okay, well, what happens if Donald Trump loses this election? Because he's assuming that he's going to win. What if he loses? So no stimulus until after the election. But if he's lo but if he loses as a lame duck president, does that mean that he's going to take action when he has like a month or so left? No. So what he's really saying in actuality is, no action unless I win. Because if you wait until after the election and he loses, he's going to sit on his fucking ass, wait for the situation to get even worse, and then hand Joe Biden an even bigger disaster as his last fuck you to America as he leaves office. This is horrible politics. Horrible politics. To openly admit that you are the ones being obstructionist is like political suicide, and it's astonishing that he's lost the plot this much because as dumb as he is, he at least was a little bit more savvy strategically in 2016, but now he has no idea what to say to appeal to people, and as he does worse and worse, he only makes matters worse for himself. You're basically admitting that you won't even try to come to the table to work with Democrats on behalf of the American people. As Crystal Ball put it, Pelosi and the Democrats literally wanted to help Trump give out money to millions of Americans just before the election, and he said no. I mean, think about that. Usually, if a party really was obstructionist, Democrats are not, they should be more, but if they were actually obstructionist, they wouldn't want to do anything that the sitting president who they're trying to defeat could brag about. So by passing a stimulus package right before the election, they're potentially giving Trump something to brag about. He could send out more checks before the election with his name on them. He won't even do that. That's how petty he is. That's how petulant he is. That's how much of an obstructionist ghoul he is. All for personal gain. Now, Trump is doing this because he thinks that it's going to be benefit him electorally, but down ballot Republicans are caught off guard by this, and they should be, because as CNN explains, the timing of Trump's sudden move perplexed even Republicans since there was little downside politically to allowing the talks to continue to play out. Now they fear that Trump's decision will make it easier for Democrats to pit the blame squarely on the White House for the collapse of the talks as many voters are eager for more relief from Washington. And they're right to fear this, because you at least could have left it up in the air. Oh, well, you know, talks are stalling, but we're still working on, working on it, I promise you. But now, you just sent a huge signal to Americans. Blame me. I'm the one who's saying no more negotiations until after the election. That is so tone deaf. And I don't know how you thought 
this would help you. I mean, sure, people value strength in a leader. They want someone who's going to be, you know, uh, tough, play hardball, negotiate on their behalf. But you just told Americans, I'm not going to do shit for you. Vote for me. I better win this election or we're not getting another round of uh, relief. Fuck you. That's what you just told the American people. I honestly, like, I'm almost speechless watching him put out this tweet. This is so fucking tone deaf. As Kyle Kalinske put it on Twitter, how to lose an election 101. You don't tell the American people you're not going to do anything for them until after an election. Whether or not people can put food on the table or pay the bills shouldn't be contingent on the outcome of the election. And you telling them that you don't care about them is really bad for you. Now, Bernie Sanders, I loved his response because he blasted Trump on Twitter saying after receiving the best socialized health care in the world, Trump just said no to providing any relief to the unemployed, the uninsured or the hungry. But he's still pushing the Senate to confirm a Supreme Court nominee who will strip health care from 20 million. How pathetic. And that's exactly it. That's probably the worst part, honestly, because, you know, you're not just saying we're not going to do anything until after this election. You're saying, I'm not going to help the American people, but I do want to get my Supreme Court nominee confirmed before the election. So, uh, Mitch, have at it. This is just so craven. You can tell how desperate he is, and he thinks this is going to benefit him, but this is not going to benefit him. That's not even a question. Like, you're hurting people. You're saying, I'm shutting down even the possibility. I mean, I don't think many of us expected there to be some sort of bill passed before the election but for you to just like outright deny that possibility you're just a fucking idiot i don't know what else to say you are fucking stupid donald trump but i mean honestly i want to say have at it because you're only going to make it more likely that you lose this election but at the same time it's like this shouldn't be about politics we shouldn't have to think about what will or won't hurt Donald Trump electorally speaking, if people need relief, we should have a government that gives them relief. But the way that we've responded to this pandemic is comparable to what we'd expect from a failed state. So, I mean, he's only hurting himself and he's making Democrats look better. They look more reasonable. They look like the ones who want to get something done for the American people. And he is unilaterally shutting down all negotiations right before an election saying, we're going to wait until after it's done. And when I win, then we'll do the relief. So you better vote for me or I'm going to punish you even more. <sighs> this is a bold strategy, Cotton. We'll see how it plays out. Literally after I finished recording that segment, he changed his mind. He already changed his mind. Tweeting out, if I am sent a standalone bill for stimulus checks, $1,200, they will go out to our great people immediately. I am ready to sign right now. Are you listening, Nancy? Mark Meadows, Senate Majority Leader, Kevin McCarthy, Speaker Pelosi, Senator Schumer. So somebody must have gotten to him and let him know that what he did was incredibly destructive, not just to his own electoral chances, but to their campaigns as well. If there's a senator who is in a purple state that wants this relief bill to go through or at least wants to make it seem as if they're fighting to have this stimulus passed but understand you still look like a petulant child because you flip-flopped within hours after tanking stimulus talks and then crashing the stock market after bragging about the stock market now you're saying okay well i changed my mind maybe we'll just do like the 1200 dollar payment so that way americans think that i sent them 1200 dollars okay but understand i that's that's something that we should do. I don't care who signs the bill, who passes the legislation. Americans need relief immediately, and $1,200 is not enough, but it's better than nothing. So pass that. I don't care about the politics. But understand why you still look like the one who's unreasonable here. The Democrats months ago already passed a stimulus package, the HEROES Act. And I'm not a fan of the HEROES Act. It doesn't go far enough. It's insufficient. Nancy Pelosi did not take in the input from progressive lawmakers. She rejected them and kind of isolated them. But still, it has a stimulus package in there. It gives Americans a direct cash payment. And on top of that, it provides schools with funding so they can actually open up safely and teach safely. So what you're basically saying is, 
I'm willing to do the bare minimum just so Americans think that I personally gave them $1,200, but when it comes to everything else that is essential, such as additional PPE and funding for schools, I don't want to do that. I mean, you've already dug this hole for yourself, and it's really difficult for you to get out of said hole. People need money. People need PPE. Schools need funding. And you're dragging your feet. People are now going to say, Democrats can easily say, okay, well, we're fine with the $1,200 standalone bill, but it's faster if you just have the Senate pass the HEROES Act, which we passed months ago. Why hasn't Mitch McConnell taken action? They can easily say that. So, I mean, there's really no way for Trump to come out of this looking like the good guy. You already look like a child, and Americans are going to see that you're only flip-flopping because it's politically expedient for you to do that after someone probably told you it's not the best idea to give Americans the finger right before a national election. But... I mean, this is Donald Trump, so by the time I finish recording this, I'm sure he will change his mind once again. You know, you never know with him. His Twitter is just insane. Uh, just trying to navigate his timeline is honestly like a nightmare. He is extremely active on Twitter. He's rage tweeting because he is pumped up on steroids, and it is quite the spectacle, but it is not necessarily something you want if you expect stability from the White House.